Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we shall take a look at some of the important and popular applications of time series analysis. So time series has a lot of applications in a lot of different areas. So for example, in finance, we can think of stocks or uh, prices of a stock uh, as a time series data set. Economics, we can, so monthly unemployment figures over time will form a time series data set. Social science, population figures is another example of time series. Epidemiology, uh, number of uh, people affected by COVID-19. In medicine, blood pressure measurements over time of a patient. Time series also has applications in fMRI. So we shall take uh, a deeper look in, into some of these applications um, in this video. So in finance, uh, what I have here is the quarterly earnings of Johnson & Johnson. So these are quarterly earnings over 84 quarters. The time is on the x-axis and earnings on the y-axis. We can see that there is increasing trend, right? So earnings are increasing over time. But we can also see that there is some kind of um, uh, periodic variation, right? So there is this regular or periodic uh, variation uh, as this trend increases. So now what I have here is the deal returns of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So we can see that uh, the average of this time series is stable around zero. So the data goes back and forth around zero. So you can see that um, what is of interest in this might be the volatility, right? The trend is around zero, right? However, it does go back and forth, back and forth. And we can see that this, this, there is this variation in the volatility. So uh, a problem in analysis of these kinds of data sets is to forecast the volatility of the future returns. Uh, note that the volatility is quite large in this area. Uh, right or at this time and this basically reflects the financial crisis of 2008 so you can imagine that during an economic downturn or during a financial crisis the volatility would increase and that is what you observe here in this time series another example is speech recognition so what do speech recognition softwares do right they record the sound they break down the audio uh, of the speech recording into individual sounds. They analyze each individual sound. Then they will use different algorithms to find the most likely word, right, that fits that particular uh, sound and it will transcribe it back to text. So if you decide to use captions for this particular video, that would be an example of speech recognition. So I have an example of a speech data set. Um, so this is basically recording of the phrase ah, right? So if you were to record this phrase, this is what its signature looks like. Observe that there are these, uh, rep that there is a repetition of these small wavelets, right? There is repetition of this certain kind of a pattern in this time series. Time series also has applications to climate studies. So this is an example of, so what I have here is uh, global average temperatures. So on the x-axis is time, y-axis I have uh, the deviations in centigrade from average temperatures of uh, from 1951 to 1980. So x-axis is not just the temperature, but it's temperature deviation, okay? So notice that there is an upward trend in the series, right, in the latter part of the 19th century. So there is some kind of leveling off about 1935, and then there is this sharp spike after 1970. So when people talk about global warming, this is what they are typically referring to, right? There is this increase in temperature. Earthquake offers an interesting example of or applic uh, interesting application of time series. 
So what I have here are recordings from a seismic reader in Scand uh, from a um, recording station in Scandinavia. So this is how recording of an earthquake looks like, and this is how a signature of an explosion looks like, right? So when your uh, recorder uh, records something, it's important to know whether it's recording an earthquake or an explosion, right? So, uh, so there is um, a, a, a common or a popular problem in, in um, this field is to distinguish or discriminate between these waveforms, right? So we catch a waveform and we want to uh, tell whether it is that of an earthquake or that of an explosion, right? So earthquake and explosion both have different patterns. Each has, a, has its own signature. So another application is in fMRI studies. So there was an experiment in which five subjects uh, were given a pre periodic brushing of hands. So their hands were brushed peri periodically. So you can see that um, the recordings of each of the five people are available, can be seen on these graphs, right? They're indicated by these different colors. So stimulus was applied for 32 seconds and then it was stopped for 32 seconds. So readings were taken from different parts of the brain, like cortex, thalamus, cerebellum. An observation was taken every two seconds. So you can see that um, the recordings or the uh, time series from the cortex looks different from that of the thalamus and the cerebellum. The periodicities are stronger here and they're not so strong here. You can kind of see some periodicity here as well, but it's much stronger in the cortex region. So this might suggest, this graph here might suggest that different areas of brain uh, respond differently to this stimulus, right? So maybe we need further studies, right? So maybe we need to test if uh, two regions indeed respond differently to the stimulus. So we saw different examples of time series, right? Each of uh, different time series can have um, different patterns, different behaviors. So that brings us to model building. How do we build models that will reflect uh, various properties of the time series data set? So we're basically going to model the relation between the different time points, right? So that's so um, we are going to focus on how to build different models that will reflect these different kinds of time series in this course. So in the next video, we shall see how to denote a time series mathematically.